Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pankaj Dhingra, a proud fin climber and difficulty for strategic business leader exam. Welcome. Welcome friends, welcome to the session wherein we intend to cover the amendments. Yes, my friend. Examiner has recently added few very important areas onto your syllabus. And that was the reason, my friend, I thought let us just do that separately and get into the details of it. Examiner recently has added on, my friend, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence and robotics as one of the upcoming areas onto your syllabus. He has added that, my friend, with all the more good reasons because he really wants you to be prepared with these new upcoming technologies because come what may, when you would hit the industry, you would anyway have to deal with this. And that is the reason, my friend, I do feel that this really becomes important from your examination standpoint because I see somewhat examiner might be testing on this in some way or the other, whether it is in the December 2021 exam or the exams that are coming later, you may get to see some question on this, this topic. That was the reason, my friend, I thought, let us just get into the details, get in and deep dive the same. And of course, kill this, my friend, to the best extent possible. Shall we just jump in and see that? Yes, sir. All righty. Now, this is an amendment, my friend, that has come up recently to cover the 21-22 examinations. All righty. We have the machine learning, my friend, artificial intelligence and robotics that we really need to cover now. Now, what does this really mean? Let's, go, let's just go and circle this out. All right. Artificial intelligence is the wider ranging tool that enable people to rethink how we integrate the information and you do and deal with this day in and day out, my friend. When you will just open up your mobile and start typing anything on the WhatsApp, the suggestion that it starts giving you on the various words, that is again an artificial intelligence, my friend. We guys are almost used to it on anything and everything we do. But the only thing is from the corporate side of it, from the side of you becoming the strategic business leader, how would you take on this artificial intelligence from the implementation standpoint? How would you take this artificial intelligence as a product to the people at large? Being a corporate, what all are the repercussions that you may need to have in your mind is something examiner can really test you on. And that is what we intend to discuss and deep dive in. Remember, my friend, we have a separate, separate technical article on this concept and on this area, which is there on the ACC website. Link of that I would be providing in the, in the video today. But what I've done is I've really conceptualized that technical article and prepared the notes for you so that it becomes a lot easier for you to really go through as to what the examiner wants and what is that that he can really test you on. I do have a summary at the end wherein I have really pointed out the areas which examiner can really test you on so that we can just kill it there. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. That can be used. Artificial intelligence can be used for analyzing the data and of course, use and resulting insights to improve decision making and already it is transforming every walk of life. This is the basic thing, my friend. As I said, you would have seen artificial intelligence in its own ways while you're doing anything and everything just that we don't notice that all right machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence so we have the artificial intelligence as a bigger umbrella and machine learning is piece of it which is something now is really really picking up all right machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that allows the software application to become more accurate at predicting outcomes without being explicitly programmed to do so. So effectively, machine learns what you really teaches them. And of course, he effectively done the work that you want the machine to be doing for you. Of course, not everything can be managed by that machine, but the routine task, the predetermined task, which you can really ask machine to really deliver, they are delivering that. All right. Machine learning algorithm use historical data as the input to predict the new output values. All right. We'll just circle through things, my friend. I do not want you to memorize this as a concept. I really want you to understand that this is a modern nuance, my friend, that is coming your way. And you just have to take that on the piecemeal basis and grab that, my friend. Grab that and, of course, think through from the implementation standpoint what issues you may have and just give back the examiner exactly what he needs. We'll circle down that, my friend, in a while. 
I'll just quickly jump in in terms of you know some of the uses that I wanted to highlight from the machine learning standpoint. Now, the first and the foremost thing is that machine learning is very well used in the customer relationship management. Now, the CRM software can use machine learning models to analyze email and prompt sales team members to respond to the most important messaging first. Now, I can tell you one thing. Now, you have tools, my friend, which can really help you in terms of, you know, giving the common and, of course, the intelligent answers of the email that you receive in there and then. All of that is nothing but you have told the machine that this is what you really need to respond. And, of course, that can be only the standard messages. It cannot be like very complicated one. But, of course, the normal ones can be certainly be dealt with the machine learning tool. And that's what we really want to be talking on over here. All right. Moving on, my friend, we have the business intelligence now we have the bi and the analytic vendors use machine learning in their software to identify potentially important data points pattern of the data points and anomalies various basic intelligent points i would say are being handled and being resolved my friend with the help of machine learning tools this really helps you in terms of covering your reporting to a large extent especially for the area which is very, very, I would say, common or very routine in nature, wherein you can put in the algorithm and get the robot or get the machine work for you. All right. The human resource information system, the HRI system that are there in the corporate can use machine learning models to filter out the applications and identify the best candidate for an open position. I can craft out and I've seen this software myself. I can craft out a software that can really scan through hundreds and thousands of the CVs and of course, this is what we have defined how to really choose out a CV. They will certainly give you the first cut selection being done over there. That's what machine learning tool really helps you. But of course, that cannot be very precise, my friend. That can only work to an extent that you would that you're able to define what parameters they should be working on. That cannot be 100% correct. Of course, you have to have the human intervention and that's what we'll play around with. All right. We have the self-driving cars. The dream coming through, my friend. You would certainly see self-driving cars really coming your way. Machine learning algorithms can even make it possible for the semi-autonomous cars to recognize the partially visible object and alert the driver. You can really go into the market. And of course, while we do not have self-driving cars, especially in the Asian countries per se, but you would see many of the technologies are really talking about the machine learning algorithms why while you know you have the nt breaking nt I, I don't know if i'm using the right word but nt skid breaking system the abs you know is 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 now being upgraded to a to an x to a stage wherein now the car can really see how the distance with the other car is and they can really go slow and so on and so forth so you're really mixing up the hardware with the softwares with the with the machine learnings that are really coming your way and that's gonna be the future all right you have the virtual assistant i used to have one right we are used to virtual assistant wherein smart assistant typically combine supervised and the unsupervised machine learning models to interpret natural speech and the supply context if you call at some number that number is being picked up by a robot by a machine and that machine really switches it on to somebody of course, with the help of algorithm that is being defined, that is nothing but the machine learning. If you now really circle back, my friend, and you have various examples being given over here that we just covered, you would understand that machine learning is part and parcel of your own life. Now, we are dealing with that on day in and day out basis. Siri is again an example of the machine learning, my friend, that you see on the Apple iPhone. And of course, you would have that with a different name on different iPhones or different phones for that matter. Just understand that machine learning is becoming becoming a very important part of your own life. And that is why, my friend, the examiner loves to test on the topics that are really, really modern in nature, that are really shaping up and changing the industry at large. That is the reason I expect something coming on this, my friend, down the line. That is the reason, my friend, we should be best prepared with that and we will kill it. We will kill it. All right. Many businesses take up the artificial intelligence technology to try to reduce the operational cost. Yes, sir. Increase efficiency, grow revenue and improve customer experience depending upon which company it is, depending upon which, what is the purpose for which they have deployed the artificial intelligence, they would lie in any of the bucket. All right. For the greatest benefit, businesses should look at putting the full range of smart technologies, including machine learning, natural language processing and more into the process and products. However, even businesses 
that are new to AI can reap major rewards. If you see the new startups that are really coming up, my friends, you would understand that many of the startups are being built on onto the artificial intelligence in terms of you know what robot can do, the kind of operational efficiency they can deliver, and so on and so forth. More so because they really want to really want to build up a culture wherein you have very less people and many, many, many machines doing the work of the people at large, of course, with the various level of supervisions that is being required in it. All right. The artificial intelligence and the impact on the business. That is something, this is something, my friend, you really need to know. Because if examiner may test you, let's say examiner gives you a case wherein he gives you a case wherein the company is thinking about deploying an artificial intelligence to be given to the customer and so on and so forth. You would need to understand the basic nuance of artificial intelligence in terms of you know how would that work for that organization as well as the impact that it may have if you really circle out the impact by deploying the right artificial intelligence your business may gain you have to understand what can be the benefits number one save time and money absolutely you would certainly save time machine will work on and of course you would save money my friend because you are able to reduce your headcount all right increase productivity and operational efficiencies period sir it's very very clear sir make faster business decision because you would get information at the click of the button if you really go and scan through the tableaus of the world the alterixes of the world they are really taking up shape my friend by just having the information in the reporting world at the click of the button i have deployed to tableau and alterix in my organization i've seen the kind of change we have been able to deliver behind that you have to have to understand that that things are really changing my friend the normal basic plain vanilla work is now getting outsourced not to the people but to the machines all right avoid mistakes and human errors of course if machine does that they would certainly have less errors on that use insight to predict the customer preferences and offer them the better personalized experience who have not seen the amazon you buy a thing from the amazon and amazon really tracks you my friend by that product in terms of what have you bought what would go in addition to that what would be complementary to it what would be substitute to it and what not they really tracked your preferences all right then mine vast amount of data to generate quality leads and grow your customer base this has been the business of many companies my friend they're really working towards generating the right leads for the people what they really need just by doing the analysis of the data points all right increase the revenue by identifying and maximizing the sales opportunities you have to see the you know opportunities my friend and more you see that you would get the benefit of that grow expertise by enabling analysis and offering intelligent advice and support you have to just go on to the basic my friend and of course if you really implement that you would be able to grow the expertise and of course enable the analysis that was not available before if you get that you are really adding value to your organization is that clear yes sir now one thing that you really need to know my friend if you really read through the technical article that may seem complex at times by having something like this which is a very handy thing for you to just scan through as to what those pointers are becomes very easy and that's what we have tried doing over here by just giving you a few pointers as to what the artificial intelligence is all about what do you really understand? What do you really need to understand from the standpoint of benefits, from the standpoint of cons and so on and so forth. This artificial intelligence as a topic is so vast, my friend. I just could not cover that in half an hour. But what I've covered is what is relevant from your examination standpoint so that you are best prepared for it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The benefit of artificial intelligence and humans working together. You have to see that, my friend, because if you get to see a situation, wherein there is a debate going on in between the directors wherein one should be implementing the artificial intelligence and of course or of course you know work being done by the humans you have to understand something like this i'm only guessing things my friend what examiner can really put across to you who knows if you get to see something like that in the exam and if you get it my coffee would be due on you for sure is that clear yes sir research suggests that the artificial intelligence doesn't perform best on its own there is a there is a research for that ai technologies are great at driving or even replacing the lower level repetitive tasks but businesses often achieve the greatest performance improvements when human and machines work together we understand that sir we know that sir that's just one thing that you really need to know is 
that you have to point this out over there too if you get to see a question in the exam in relation to the same. Is that clear? Yes, sir. To make the most of this powerful technology, you should consider artificial intelligence as a means of uh, augmenting rather than replacing the human capabilities. Now, this can be a big time debate, my friend. And I have seen various debates happening in my organizations in terms of you know where I have worked that there was huge argument at times that can the machine be the ones who would replace the humans in the long run and so on and so forth. You have to know, my friend, they work very good with humans. And of course, they cannot replicate humans to the 100% of the cases. Of course, there are some works that we can really certainly think about, you know, really pushing down to the machines, but not everything can be done by machines as of now. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Robotic process automation, the RPA is my friend, very, very fancy term in the industry. If you really go, many of the folks have mentioned this onto their CV, onto their LinkedIn profile that what they manage is the robotic process automation. Nothing, my friend, it is just the machine learning tools that are using in the transaction processing business. Most of this really works in the transaction processing business, wherein the tasks are very repetitive, very routine. Vendor invoice processing, very routine. You can define a protocol, you can define a robot to really deal with because all of the invoices beyond a point are the same in terms of the content, in terms of the rates and so on and so forth. So you can have a machine really working on and of course crafting and drafting that as a payment for a particular invoice. Those are the process that really comes up under the robotic process automation and this is again a sub, I would say sub function of the artificial intelligence that is really hitting the industry very hard all right it may result into what the higher customer and the employee satisfaction of course you would have higher satisfaction my friend if you are able to deliver through the rpa because the efficiency improves the effectiveness improves the error reduce and whatnot ultimately you would have higher customer satisfaction and the employee satisfaction you have enhanced quality productivity and efficiency we know that sir that goes without saying sir this is very, very, very obvious, sir. I'm just not reading all the terms, my friend. That's not relevant. What is relevant is you understanding the content, understanding the context, because that is what you really need to pick up in the exam, my friend. You would be there standing as a strategic business leader, and you really need to understand as to what the examiner is really expecting out. He would certainly want you to play a role of a strong, strong industry leader, thinking through the pros and cons of any automation, any artificial intelligence deployment, and of course, thinking about the benefits, thinking about the demerits, thinking about the cons and coming up with the balanced argument. That is what you really need to learn, my friend. That is the job of any and every strategic business leader. We have covered at length, my friend, on these topics in terms of how one should be thinking through in our sessions, in our question marathon, in our revision boot camps. You have to deploy the same logic, my friend. Again, the RAF P that I have told you in our session is going to be doing wonders, my friend. Do not forget that. Color it up with the artificial intelligence questions that you may have. Deploy the artificial intelligence knowledge that we are gaining out here and sky will be the limit. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Of course, this helps in reducing the room of error by friend and higher accuracy. Goes without saying, sir. Then this is something classic, my friend. I really want you to know because there are some limitations. There are some risks that we should call out if we are given an opportunity to represent the industry there and come back with the rightful solution. All right, what is that? Risk and limitation of the artificial intelligence in the business. Let's go and circle this out. Businesses are increasingly looking for ways to put artificial intelligence technologies to work to improve their productivity, profitability and businesses. Everybody wants to do that. If you go into any industry, they all want automation. They all want the artificial intelligence deployment to happen just, just like this. But is that that easy? All right. However, while there are many business benefits to the artificial intelligence that we've just read, there are some issues, my friend. There are also certain barriers and disadvantages to keep in mind. Do not forget that. Let's go one by one. Number one, one of the main barriers to implement the artificial intelligence is the availability of the data. To get into any organization, my friend, I've worked for so many organizations. You get into any organization, right data availability. The, I would say, you know, the single source of truth is a big time concern come what any organization you're talking about any organization my friend this is a big time issue if you do not have the right data point what would an ai would do 
garbage in garbage in would certainly throw a garbage out and that's what it is all about you have to call it out my friend in case you get to see something like this in the exam you have to call out that this is something one has to really ensure all right data is often inconsistent and of poor quality all of which present challenges for the business looking to create value from ai to scale to overcome this you should have a clear strategy from the outset or for the sourcing of data that your ai will require do not forget that my friend very important another key road block for the ai is the skill shortage do you get people in the market who really understand ai these are like techno financial people my friend gone is the time you can only be a finance guy and understand finance and understand accounting you really need to understand the technology now but do you get that kind of a talent in the market so easily nope i'm struggling to get people my friend for my organization for long for whatever time possible you know we have been struggling out with because getting talent who understand the ai who understand the machine learning who understand the rpas is not that prevalent in the market again this really points out to you to you in in the direction my friend in which we should be working out because that's going to be the future but currently that is a big time problem from the implementation standpoint if you get to see a question in the exam wherein you have to implement the strategic as a strategic business leader you have to implement this as a technology in an organization think about the talent availability in that country in that industry in that area in that region do not forget that my friend do not do not do not miss on that this is going to be a very important point in the exam is that clear yes sir and the availability of technical staff with the experience and training necessary to effectively deploy and operate ai solutions got it sir research suggest experienced data scientists are short in supply and other specialist data professionals skilled in machine learning training good models etc are very 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 uncommon to get in the market all righty then comes the cost i'll be see it will certainly save cost but it's going to be having huge cost for the implementation cost is another key consideration while procuring the ai technologies businesses that are lack in house skills and are unfamiliar with the ai often have to outsource yes sir which is where challenge of the cost and maintenance comes in due to the complex nature smart technologies can be expensive we all know that sir and you can incur further cost to repair and ongoing maintenance the computational cost for training data models etc can also be additional expense do not forget that my friend d minutes is something has to be in your blood because if the examiner really ask you you have to evaluate the pros and cons these are the things that you should certainly put him across is that clear yes sir now coming up the software programs need regular updation we know that sir this is pathetic sir we see phone really making requiring too much of updation sir then it, at times it gets slow sir at times we are struggling sir and what not same is the case over here my friend it will require an upgradation because technology keeps changing version keep changing if that happens it's going to be a problem all right and in case of breakdown present the risk of losing the code on the important data now if really breaks down then what we lost sir everything is gone sir you have to have the proper backup and again cost again cost and again cost think like that all right restoring this to often time consuming and costly too however the risk is no greater than ai then with the other software development we understand that sir provided that the system is designed well and that those procuring ai understands the requirement and the option these risks can be mitigated but god knows who would know that all right then you have some ai limitation you that are related to the others i would say non financial factors one number one the implementation time is high which may be lengthy my friend depending upon what you're trying to implement yes sir it can be long one then integration challenges it should integrate with your current system is it getting integrated sir a big time problem sir there is a conflict sir that conflict really really drills down into the into the organization and many of the people really have issues with it all right then usability my friend and somewhere to do with the interoperability with the systems and the platforms it may not just be usable my friend at times if it is not talking to the other systems it becomes an issue is that clear yes sir if you are deciding whether to take on ai driven technology you should also consider what i think this is in red and that is the reason it is a super important thing which i would really want you to mention over there you have to think about the customer privacy the potential lack of transparency and technological complexity my friend that really comes your way 
the security, the, the data points, the customer privacy is a big time issue, my friend, if you would want AI to handle how secure that platform is, God knows. You cannot secure that, you cannot be sure of it, and that's where the problem really gets in. Even if you get to see something like this in the exam, my friend, and you're able to illustrate these important pointers over here, examiner would be super happy, my friend, and my coffee would be sure shot coming my way. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Some of the ethical concerns, my friend, I really want you to point down because these are not like financial or non-financial factors. These are some big time factors that are being discussed in the industry at large. I have been through the CFO of an organization. I know that these discussions have been there on the table wherein I am discussing this with the HR heads, with the operation heads of the world that this is something that may come their way. And if that is the reason, how should one be handling that? You as the strategic business leader needs to be aware of it. All right. With the rapid development, my friend, of the AI, a number of ethical issues have cropped up. Number one, the potential of automation technology is to give rise to the job losses. Of course, it would give rise, right? The routine jobs are being taken up by the machine, so it would result into the job loss. You being the strategic business leader have to be open in your mind, my friend. How would you deal with that? All right. The need to redeploy or retrain employees to really keep them in job would certainly be there. Again, a sub-function of the first point, my friend, if you are making them jobless, you have to really consume them somewhere, retrain them. How would you handle that? All right. Fair distribution of wealth somewhere, my friend. You have to think about that. Would that result in it? All right. The effect of machine interaction on the human behavior and the attention. I can tell you, the people who are really dealing with the machine, their behavior itself really changes. So it's a human impact, my friend, that really comes your way if you deal with machines. You're not, they're not humans, my friend. They would not reciprocate. They would not have emotions and so on and so forth. You have to learn that way. Is that easier? What would be the counter impact of it? What would be the after effect of it? Something what really need to, really need to circle back. All right. The need to address the algorithmic bias, my friend, originating from the human bias in the data. You may get to see a biasness in the algorithm that you really play around with. If that is the case, any result that you would get from the AI would also be biased. All right, sir. Moving on. The security of AI system is a big concern. We have already discussed that. You have to ensure that the data points in the artificial intelligence system are completely secured. All right. The need to mitigate against the unintended consequences as the smart machines are thought to learn and develop independently. You don't know this, my friend, but this was the point that I really wanted to really bring on over here. You never know when machine becomes bigger than the humans. If we really deploy, uh, I would say, huge effort and the technology onto it, who knows if at times down the line, the uh, the the overall human factor is is being taken control by the machines who knows that again a very philosophical concept but that is something to be thought about all right while you can't ignore these risks my friend it is worth keeping in mind that advances in ai can for the most part create better better businesses and better lives for everyone if implemented responsibly artificial intelligence has immense and the beneficial potential i wanted to highlight this for you because there's something you have to have at the back of your mind when you're dealing with any scenario on the artificial intelligence in the exam. Some tips that I have, my friend, for you to handle in the exams. Many of the, some, many of the them we have already discussed, but I really want to really circle this down. You have to read the question very carefully, my friend. We have gone through the entire revision bootcamp and you have seen how we have really solved the question, how we are to read the question, how we are to write the question. We have seen a lot, my friend do see the requirement accordingly spend time on analyzing the situation we have done the raft p my friend do you do do implement that then see if there is a situation where the artificial intelligence the machine learning robotics can be implemented you have to check for that just do not say that anything and everything can be done by machine many of the times we get very emotional with these things and say that you know what we should deploy we should automate but think more holistically is there a need? Is there a possibility? Is there a budget? Is there a way out? Is there something that management really want to do? And so on and so forth. Think, think, think on those lines before taking any decisions. Do not just jump off the guns and say automation is the right, right solution there. Think more broadly. All right. If already done, then assess the need and benefit it is providing and the risk it have. That should be your, your, I would say, area of thoughts that you should think, see the benefits, see what the risk that really it imposes on you and so on and so forth. Look to see the ethical issues, my friend, the joblessnesses that, you know, how many people are getting jobless, how many, how are you really deploying them? 
how are you really retraining them and so on and so forth think on those lines think assess and analyze to see if ai ml or robotics really works out there that is what we started off with if yes it works out then recommend my friend with the logical reasoning that why you think it would work and of course mention the ethical consideration my friend and keep that in your mind while you're writing that you have to have a very balanced argument my friend over there the more you would have it best it is for you to handle that case. is that clear yes sir but if no my friend if you do not think that ai would work and then mention your reasons and the issues my friend we have discussed a lot my friend something from this would certainly suit in over there do mention that mention these limitations the ethical issues and just just close this with an argument that considering this you do not think the implementation of the ai would be a right solution there I would always say my friend and I keep saying that in my sessions and of course in the marathon that we've done that your argument should be a very balanced one you should not just see the negative side of it or the positive side of it when examiner is asking you something like this you have to have been there as a strategic business leader think it more holistically and then decide on the right course of action is that clear yes sir now this is what has been added on into your exam my friend you do not have any need of going through the technical article for this if you have seen this video and of course seen the notes i would be giving these notes in the link below on this video you can just click on the link below and download these these notes and of course go through it on it on your own one thing that i really want to cover up from the risk side of it again this is something that has been just added on to your syllabus area which is something that now they have defined that there are four lines for defense in the risk i just want to call out we have already covered my friend in the session but i just wanted to call out this because this is something that has been newly added hence you never know if they this really gets tested in the exam now we have the four four areas my friend or four lines of defense in the risk which were already there always there the only thing is now we have to learn by saying that we have the four lines of defense number one is what number one is your internal internal function man that manage the risk you have the function that is the first first ones who are getting impacted by the risk they are the ones who are managing that so that is the first ones and what is the second line of defense second line of defense is that what you have in the form of the uh, i would say the finance the middle office the the overall uh, i would say leadership that you have over there that really manages that would be the second line of defense that one should be really thinking through when they are really seeing an organization so you have the first line of defense my friend that really covers as the functions who manages the risk manages the functions man they are basically the functions who are owning owning the risk so you would have the functions my friend for example we may have the hr functions they are the ones who are managing their own risk we have the finance function they are the one who are managing their own risk they are the ones who are responsible and of course the first line of defense of their own risk now if you really go on and switch on to the functions as the second line of defense they are the ones who are somewhere overseeing the risk for example we'll have the compliance function or the risk control functions they are the one my friend who are really looking on to the risk of an organization at large they are the ones who are supervising the risk for an organization at large they are the ones who are the second line of defense for an organization so one is of course the functions functions as as such in themselves they have to control the risk and then you have the supervisory functions in the form of risk function or the compliance function they really overlook what is really happening in various various separate functions and then you get the internal audit for department my friend internal audit department is acting as the third line of defense for an organization they are the ones who are taking care of you know how the organization at large is being managed what kind of controls are being there are they really operating effectively efficiently or not and once that they have done their job then comes the fourth line of defense my friend that is nothing but the external audit there are the external parties who are responsible for what is happening in the organization at large and they have the responsibility of commenting my friend as to how do they see the internal controls of an organization and how do they see they they been working rightly or not you have the four line of defense my friend in any organization you have the functions you have the overseeing functions 
you have the internal audit department and then you have the external audit at large who are really managing the overall show of an organization. Now, why I'm really calling out over here is because now that they've defined that you have the four lines of defense in the risk, if you get a question in the risk, and we have discussed that at length in our sessions, if you get a question of the risk, you have to see it from the standpoint that, you know, do you have the first line of defense working right for you? Or the second line of defense? Or the third line of defense? Or the fourth line of defense? What is being captured where? And if you really capture it in a way that you're able to demonstrate the examiner that these were the four lines of defense and this is where the gap is, this is where we really need to work upon, this is where the organization has to really be working upon as the corrective action plan. This is where directors have to think through. This is where the board of the board has to really uh, define the plan of action and so on and so forth. Examiner would really like because you have covered the whole covered holistically all of the four lines of defenses, and that's what examiner really want. Do not forget, my friend, these are the areas what we have discussed today are the newly added ones. So you may expect to see something on this in the exam. So just scan through this. And I'm, I'm sure once you'll, well, once you'll scan it and start practicing some of the questions and I'm sure, you know, when you'll practice the marathon, you will understand that, you know, all of these things are duly, duly taken care in the analysis, the way we do. And of course, in the writing, the way we write. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, this is what I wanted to cover in this session, my friend, from the standpoint of amendment. I just wanted to circle off in terms of, you know, what you have in your syllabus now as far as the artificial intelligence concerned and as far as the risk i would say the four line of defense of the risk is concerned we have covered that my friend i would keep saying the same thing i've been saying in all the classes my friend please see the sessions at least twice please practice the marathon my friend we have really practiced a lot over there be it the concept questions the comprehensive questions the exam standard questions and past examination questions i've solved a lot for you just practice that again and again and of course see through the videos of the reading skills, the writing skills and the professional skills not to forget the formats what we have covered and so on and so forth. The more you would see at least two times and practice few questions by your own hand, the best fit you are. And of course in the end, do see this amendment video. Amendment video would certainly help you in terms of knowing what has really come your way or really come and add it on to your syllabus area. The more you'll understand that, I'm sure the technique that I've told you in terms of, you know, how one should be answering that, you would be able to answer and of course, give back the examiner exactly what he needs. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now that is what I wanted to cover in this session, my friend. I'll see you again in the next one. Till then, this Pankaj Dhingra signing off. Mm -hmm.